right, folks, there is not a shortage of news, so we're going to jump right into it. First of all, we want to remind you all the Dice Tower Spring Spectacular starts on Monday, March 22nd to 25th with our top 10 games. Everyone should play at least once. Mike Delisio's top 50 games of all time. Playthrough of many different games. We have a schedule up on Facebook. We'll be posting it on Board Game Geek and other spots over the weekend. So you'll be able to see that. We'll still have our various shows. We'll have this board game breakfast. We'll have crowd surfing. But we're all and we're gonna have our new marble ramp. We're gonna announce the nominations for the Dice Tower Awards for last year. So a lot of really cool things. There'll be contests and such. Join us live. It's gonna be fantastic. We hope this is this is next yes. week, like Monday, right? And this is Monday. Like Indeed. Monday, like like Monday. Yes, Monday. Yes. After huh. Sunday before Tuesday, Monday. Huh. Okay, yeah, thanks. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure I'll, you know, I'll be invited to something. I'm sure you are invited to something. You're going to see Mr. Bonacore next Thursday on our <laughs> Spring Spectacular Thursday board game breakfast. Yeah. Wow. Just, They're yeah. also invited to watch if you want. <laughs> uh, all right. So here we go, folks. Lots of news. This is, uh, you probably don't know, a lot of folks don't know this, but Gamma Trade Show happens this week. Normally, it's in person. It was the, it happened a week earlier last year. Um, and it was the last United States uh, expo to go on. I think Aircon was the last one in total. But anyway, a lot of industry news gets announced there. This year they're doing it online, so a lot of industry news has been announced, which is why we're about to do that. So first of all, Gen Con finally made an announcement about what they are doing uh, because we, you know, we've been all waiting on this. I haven't bought tickets or anything for Gen Con. And so they have delayed it like every other con has. They delayed it to September 16th through 19th. They said it's going to be a three-part con. We're going to have Gen Con in person. Uh, they're not saying exactly what they're going to be doing. They're talking. Right now, they're saying that you'll probably have to wear a mask, but they don't know if they're going to require you to have a vaccine. If, if you read through their statement, they're very ambiguous about everything on purpose because we don't know what life's going to be like in September. They're also going to have pop-up Gen Cons. This is something they started two years ago where – Games that are released at Gen Con will also be in stores at the same time. They've talked about there's a Gen Con online thing that they'll be doing. They're going to, they said a few things that they will change possibly is maybe only so many people will be in the exhibit hall at any given point in time, uh, that they will not allow exclusives. So you, that way people won't be rushing to get in the hall. I don't know how you can police that, but. Right. Mm. So if I may. Um, you, I, I literally, you know. I literally squealed, uh, when I heard the news yesterday. Now I anticipated Gen Con running. I actually anticipated running in, in August, but to me, it was such a wonderful moment to say, Hey, the biggest convention in the, in the U S at least is going to happen this year. We're coming back to some sense of normalcy. I, I was just happy. And I said with vaccine, in shoulder, which obviously we should have by then, and I will have, I will be in Indianapolis, I will be at Gen Con in September. So I'm very excited about this. Okay, so the question someone just asked whether we'll be there or not, we hope so. Now this is the week directly after the Dice Tower retreat. So that's two weeks in a row. Actually, I was very nervous when I first heard him announce it because I was like, what if it's during the retreat? Because we would go to the retreat over going to Gen Con because we've made that commitment. Sure. Um, going from one to the other. But this is an interesting thing that's happened here. This is now two weeks directly before Origins. It's about a month before Essen. It is a month. It is two months before PAX. And with all these conventions at the same time, there's going to be a little bit of problems logistically. Companies are not going to be able to go to all of them. Some companies will. But some companies are not going to be able to go to all of them. Uh, people aren't going to be able to go to all of them. It's it's going to be a little messy. They're all going to be smaller, I imagine. And again, depending on how the world goes, they could delay it again. It could get canceled still. That's still a possibility. I know. I know. I know. You're very excited about it, Mr. Bonacore. I, I, I am. And, and, and I'm not – I wasn't necessarily excited about the delay. I mean, you know, listen, Gen Con will not be the same, uh, definitely. It will not be um, as good, probably. Uh, but it's there and it's back and we can celebrate that alone and we can celebrate getting together if you can 
and things like that if you feel comfortable. I don't see so, that as it's good for Origins, though. No, I think I think it is extremely bad news for Origins. That is 100% true, which I'm planning on going to as well at the moment if I can make these um, amount of travel relations and be away this much. I have the luxury of time more than most people these days. So I will try to make these two conventions. And then after that, it's going to be, well, after that, it's definitely going to be like BGG Con. But I don't know that Essen's running. I think that's still a a stretch. We I'm, don't know I'm, that BGG I'm, Con is running either. We were talking about this here today. I if think we can only, will. If we can go to these, what are we going to do? Which ones, which one to go to, which to not, folks? And so I, I wish I could tell you more than that. I would say Gen Con is more possible for Dice Tower than origins and it's more possible for us in essen because essen requires traveling across the sea also right. there's things like for example if i get a hotel at gen con and something happens i can cancel that hotel as we learned from last year if you cancel a hotel at essen you don't get your money back <laughs> or yeah, at least hotel, the main of course yeah the main hotel there well that's a big deal that's not a small amount of money oh yeah um, also there's the going from one country to another so there's just a lot of things involved with this i hope this works out um, but who knows? And so, but it's definitely news at least. The one thing I was surprised about this news rollout is they announced it to everybody at the same time. Normally, Gen Con announces things to exhibitors first. I would I would have found out, but they announced, and the exhibitor email that they sent me basically said, we don't know what we're doing yet with exhibits. So I don't even know how that's working yet. I'm assuming, uh, you know, because I paid for this Gen Con already. Uh, so <laughs> no, two years ago. I, right. Gen Con, you pay if you pay at Gen Con for the following year, you get a slight right. discount, and you also are guaranteed to come back. As opposed, right. to if you wait, you might not get your spot. So every year at Gen Con, there's a line of people waiting to pay, you know, because you don't want to lose your spot. <laughs> we'll see. All right, let's talk about some games. Clank in Space, Pulse Arcade. This is a new expansion. Add six modules to the game. Z, when's the last time you played Clank in Space? It's been a while for me. It's been ages. I played with you last time I played. Any Clank. I actually don't own any Clank, and I haven't played any of them. because you. That's right. Played... You have played Clank Legacy. No, I never played. You played the entirety of that. I played Clank in Space once or twice with you there, and that was it. Um... I'm not nearly as big a fan of Clank, uh, any of them, as you are, or pretty much anybody else in the office, actually. So is this an expansion to a to Clank in Space? Is Clank in Space Adventures something else? No, from what I can tell, it's just six <clears throat> modules for Clank in Space. So there's Clank, Clank in Space, and Clank Legacy. Uh, expansions for so Clank Legacy. Well, Clank Legacy is just regular Clank. Legacy Clank in Space has the modular board. It's in space, different things. I just so, find the whole naming structure for someone not as familiar with it, like myself, very confusing. Clank, Clank in Space, Clank in Space, because the Legacy is not called Legacy. It has a name, right? R and D department or something, and then Clank Adventures. I don't no, know no, what's no. going on. I don't know what this is an expansion for, but it well, scares me. Happily, I'm able to tell you. It's an expansion for Clank in Space. I'm scared. Um. <laughs> I'm frightened of the world uh, that we live in now. In, and uh, in, Clank it, I don't want to know. In space, right. no one can hear you scream, Z. Let's go to something Z does know about. Pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Pandemic. So they have now puzzles where they give you some cards. Yeah. They give you some roles. They give you some things happening, and you got to figure it out. That's kind of interesting. I've seen. It's really cool. This reminds me of I don't know if you guys ever seen like a chess puzzle. Like someone will give you a chess thing, and they'll say, "White Mate mates and three. three move," and you're like, "Oh, how do I do that?" This feels like that same thing. Right, right, right. Um, it's neat. It's the first time they've done this. I know in the past they've done uh, like alternate setups, and then you play with like a little uh. You know, like a little mission, something specific. But this is neat. Uh, I know that uh, Niroshima Hex has done these things. Very similar. And in fact, that's a deck of cards with progressively more difficult puzzles. So this is a neat idea. I might uh, take a closer look at this and, and uh, try my hand at it in my head. See how it goes. This is well, a weird one for me because even though I like puzzles, I really like puzzles, I don't, 
I want my game to not have a single solution. I, I mean, I get that, that this way this is, but I like the freedom. So I think this is not necessarily for me. Well, this is such a, they give you, I'm assuming, such a specific case with such a specific setup. You know what I mean? That it's, um, when you would be at this point in a game, if you would ever find yourself, then it's so late game. You, you They probably have one way to win at that point. You know, the tree and the branches have all started to come down to a single finite point. Sure. It doesn't bother me, you know? I'd love to try this to see if that's the case or if there are, are potentially multiple solutions, which would make it a little more interesting. I agree with that. All right. So we have a new game from Boards and Dice. It's mm. the founders of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan, Tom. Teotihuacan, Tom. Can't why is, you can't why are you that. adding an extra syllable? It's very I'm weird. adding Tom at the end. Teotihuacan. The best way to do it is to to think of the hua as one syllable. Teotihuacan. Hua. Yeah, I basically said that. All right. Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. Hey, I'm willing you. to accept that I don't pronounce it perfectly well, but I don't think you were doing a great job <laughs> at it either. So, anyhow, it's a tile laying game based on the original game, but with a completely different designer. So this, there's not a lot of information about it. This makes me think of uh, founders of Gloomhaven. They went for the same naming structure here. You know, big hit, Teotihuacan and Gloomhaven, and then they they do something else and. Uh, Hopefully this is really neat and then it, you know, but it does feel like I know Founders of Gloomhaven wasn't necessarily a big hit, you know. Well, I this, hope this I hope this does uh, well. The designer of this is the same one who did the recent Mandala Stones. Um, mm -hmm. He doesn't have any other huge hits. His his highest ranked game is Beer Empire, uh, okay. which originally was produced by NSKN. So we'll have to wait and see. But, and there's not a lot of information about that. All right. Quacks of Quedlingburg, big box. Um, so <laughs> there's an expansion for Quacks of Quedlingburg, the Herb Witches. And then there's also a second expansion, the Alchemist, which is not out in England, English yet. Sorry. Not out in English yet. Um, this is a really weird product to me because I have the Quacks of Quedlingburg and I have the Herb Witches and they fit very easily and that's with the upgraded components from bgg in the base game box so they're just putting them know. into one box we okay. need to chill with the usage of this whole big box moniker <laughs> what's that mean anymore even also i really I'm serious dislike... man this is like a game and it's one expansion that's not the big box that i mean you can little... call it whatever you want like you can call this the Quacks of Quellingburg Ultimate Edition, uh, all inclusive, you know, all expenses paid trip, but that's not what it is. Yeah, There's but the already another expansion that's not even in here. That's also that's not a so great cover. Sensitive. They just smashed two box covers together. It it just it doesn't look good, does it? Where they have that line down the middle with the picture? Would have been nice of them to integrate the witches somewhere into the original picture, but no, I it, it's a little odd. I agree. I agree with you. I love be nice this game, but I have no desire to get this because again, I have the original thing and the expansion. Yeah, why wouldn't they put Alchemist in there right. too? Interesting. Right. Um, I still have. Why? Why are you hyphenating big box? Stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> can you be many more critical on this? Do you? How do you spell? How do you pronounce Quellenberg? Is it Quellenberg? Quellenberg. Quellenberg. No one cares. Oh, All right, let's move. This, oh, this next for... piece of news is really fascinating. Yeah. All right, so Steve Kimball, who is one of the nicest people in the entire industry, I think, um, he runs uh, Z-Man games. Uh, he used to run Wind Rider games, which was the Euro game Department of Fantasy Flight, which they merged with Z-Man when they came on. And he's one of the main reasons that they brought back some of these classic games, Tigers and Euphrates, Samurai, Ra, etc. So basically, he wrote a long essay where essentially he said they're dropping this line. They're returning the rights to these games to the original authors, mostly Reiner Knizia, um, because they're mostly his games. And he even showed artwork for the new Princes of Florence game. They were actually getting ready to reproduce this game, which was at one point ranked number two on Board Game Geek. Mm -hmm. And he said that they're no longer doing these. 
because he gave a lot of different reasons for it, essentially saying these classic Euro games don't sell that well. Despite what a few loud people on the internet will tell you, these games don't sell well, he says. Uh, people are going to Kickstarter, and if these games would do well, it would be better for them to be picked up by a company and done on Kickstarter. And he gave a nice shout-outs to various uh, publishers. He gave a shout-out to Shut Up and Sit Down, saying that if they say a game's good, it will also sell well. But right now, they're not selling as well. The 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 entire model of, of Asmodee is obviously significantly different than the average other publisher around. Sure. They need to sell thousands of units a year of a given game, and, and that's and that's with f at least five digits. They just need to sell a lot of games to make it worthwhile. Why would they want to have a game that's selling? A thousand units in their catalog when they have all these other games that they can concentrate their marketing on. So, yeah, uh, some other company's going to get it. They'll do a deluxe version of it. Uh, and these are great games, by the way. These are great games. I think maybe I'm going to start up Podfather Gaming Now line and uh, maybe I'll pick them up. No, kidding. Don't spread that rumor. But these are great games that I have in my collection and I would still well, play them. One of the lines right he said in this thing he, here, he says, he says, I honestly wonder, this is Steve saying, Mm -hmm. That if Princess had launched in today's environment, would it have ever cracked Board Game Geek's top 10? I'm not convinced that it would, he says. Not because the game isn't excellent, it truly is, but because today's conditions are so different. It made an impact at the time when a handful of established publishers released far fewer games. Now there's, nowadays there's so much noise that it's nearly impossible to ensure that your wares are seen, heard, and given a fair <laughs> chance to succeed in the market. I, I agree with that statement. I don't think it would crack the top 10. I don't think it would crack the top 100 right now if it came out today. It I would. agree. It, but and it's it, a great game. Again, that's not to say anything negative about these games, but also we've evolved, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of solid games now that it's, it's, we, we could not tell if these games were released at the same time as all the big Euro games that have come out in the past decade. Would these beat those? I don't know. And I... And I think that anyone who says, yes, they would, is a little bit burdened by nostalgia because these are the games that got me into the hobby. They're the games that probably got you yeah. into the hobby, Bonacore. Yeah, so we works. tend to think highly of them. But who's to say a more modern game, Agricola or, you know, Underwater Cities might not have grabbed us if we had played that first? 100 percent. And, you know, and the, and the artwork, of course. On these games, most of these games that we're looking at here would probably need refreshing for a modern audience and things like that. So uh, it's it's a shame that we won't see them continuing in print. But I think oh, that they are they are they will all come back into print. At least most of them will in the not too distant future. I bet. If there's one thing Dr. Reiner Canizia is good at, it's getting his games in print. He is. He is, <laughs> he can, he is very good he at can it. Definitely do that. He is. Alrighty, in sad news, we already talked um, earlier about as uh, um, Emerson's game being uh, canceled and from IDW, and now they just announced that Bomberman, a game that they were coming out, has also been canceled. So Emerson was doing, um, oh, what's the game now? Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> so this is making me a little concerned for IDW games in general. Are these nope. two, re is, is the cancellation here, they're both uh, based on video game properties. Is there a relation between the fact that it's these two, or is that a coincidence? I don't know. IDW it's themselves have a lot of licenses, almost all their games. Not all of them, but almost all of them are licensed games. So, so a little perspective on IDW. Um, they are a publicly traded company. Right. That's, so that's that makes them very interesting and, and one of the kind of unicorns sort of in our area. IDW Media Holdings is the company that's publicly traded um, and it has done specifically very badly in the stock market for the last 10 years. And it has lost money hand over fist for the last 10 years. I, I did this research and their publishing division, which. And that's the part that we care about, right? The games that are coming out. They use the IPs from the media division to, to make games. They have lost a tremendous amount of money year after year, whereas they had a small spike last year where they actually made money, but they, they came out. This this was, this was very recently uh, a public statement. Um, for, the, for their fiscal first quarter, 
Um, sales were down to $5.8 million. So you see those big, big numbers uh, down from 6.3 from a year ago, and they lost $400,000 in the quarter versus a small profit uh, of, the, of the quarter before. So it's just odd that they continue to lose money in a very big way and stay in business and stay specifically in this you know, board game business where they have these IPs that they can obviously do other things with, and they do as well. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so now we have a free print and play game you can get called Dice in a Darkness. The designer himself streams himself playing this game on Twitch. Joe Hout, his name is. He does this every Thursday, 8 p.m., and you can print out the, the roll and write game and play with him. This is kind of a cute little thing here. The, the dice have... Looks like they're dice going into a dungeon type thing. I thought this was a little interesting type thing to see being done. Really thought it was cute. I mean, it's nice that you giving people something free. They can just join him on Twitch and play with him. That's very, very, very nice. Sounds I am cute. super excited about this next piece of news, an expansion for Forgotten Waters. It is a downloadable content pack for Forgotten Waters. You don't need anything else. It gives you a new scenario, but also adds 100 plus events in the other scenarios. That is so awesome. This is what I've been wanting for a long time, where uh, you play a game and an event will show up and it's a new event. You've never seen it before. I love that sort of thing. This is this has me really excited um, that, that they are adding stuff like this to I've, Forgotten Waters. Have you? I've never played it. Um, is it Forgotten game? Waters is a cooperative game. It's yeah, it's a good game. It's a cooperative game in which you go through like a book and you're and well, you're sailing your ship across a map, and different things will happen. And it has some of the same type of stuff from um, what's that system called from? Uh, Oh, what was oh, that the, system called? the one from Dead of Winter. The uh, yeah, the one from Dead of Winter. Crossroads, the Crossroads system. Crossroads. Oh, so yeah, you'll come, system. you'll you'll get an event like, oh, something's happening. There's a bird floating in the water. Do you want to rescue it or ignore it? And then rescue. you pick what you're gonna do, and then it will tell you what happens. So this is adding more of those events that will randomly happen. I I, I just these think are that's all really cool. run. These are all run by like say the app. No one has to draw a card and wait for you to trigger something. That's correct. It's all run by the app. It will just show up and it will say, because the app knows, you, you tell who's playing. It's By the way, it's not an app. It's a web-based program, so you can run it from any anything hooked up to the internet. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. <clears throat> this is one I, I have to idea. try. I still, I got to get over my bias for my, the, for my, um, my issue with the cover of the game and just try it. It sounds like such a neat game. And the voiceover in it is just fantastic. So. Yeah, but isn't Roy in it? Didn't he I never do heard of voice. I never heard him. So. If I if I come across Roy's voice in this game, I will be completely my my immersion will be destroyed. Boom. Done. And I will immediately that. turn around and sell the game for <laughs> dirt cheap. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Wizards of the Coast. Hasbro's announced Wizards of the Coast will be one of three new divisions. Wizards of the Coast and Digital Gaming, along with Consumer Products and Entertainment. The Consumer Products will handle their traditional toys and games, and Entertainment will handle their film and television content. So Wizards of the Coast is now one-third of the company, essentially. Not really, but, I mean, it's one of their three main divisions. They have a new logo, which you can see here on your screen. There is, they're going to have an aggressive digital transformation of their games, and they say Wizards of the Coast had the highest revenue since the company was first founded. In 2020. So coronavirus did not affect Wizards of the Coast. 816 million. Yeah. This, wow. It's, uh, it, it's an absolutely astonishing um, number that they reported. The fact that, you know, they, you know, Wizards is obviously focused on CCGs, not board games, but they're part of hobby gaming. And the fact that a major corporation, a corporation worth... Fifty billion dollars, at least, um, is now hung such you know hung their hat on this thing as one of their major divisions. It, this is you know we're we're just going mainstream here, everybody. It's it's really really cool. It's an insane amount of uh, revenue. Wow. So we jump from the wizards on the coast to wise wizards. That's right. White Wizard Games has changed their names. They said they originally. 
the quote is, our original company name was a throwback to Gandalf, the iconic fantasy character. Based on feedback from the community and our future plans to broaden our product line, we decided it was time for a change, says Debbie Moyahan, who the, the COO of Wise Wizard Games. So they can keep the same, um, basically everything's the same, except they changed the word white to wise, has the same WWG there. Although it's a bit now uh, repetitive, the redundancy, wise wizard, um, since we, you mean wizards well, have to be more wise? difficult to pronounce. No, no, no. You but wizard, a, you wizard and wise have the same have the same uh, word no. background. No, not, not. okay. Hey, yes, yeah. Wiz, <laughs> wise wisdom wizard. Yes. Really? Okay. Is that like in, the etymology of the words are actually the same? I did not know that. There you go. Okay. Whoa, whoa, where does that word come from? Oh, yeah, we'll look it up. We'll be coming out with a whole bunch of new cool games this coming year. So um, there you go. I'm a billion today, Z. Anyway, go ahead. All right, in big news, we actually found out about this news, folks, after like five minutes after we did our news last week. That but was funny. I didn't want to do an addendum, so we're just talking about it now. But Asmodee has announced that they bought Plan B Games making uh, the owner of Plan B Games, Sophia, the first person to sell a company to Asmodee twice since she sold Z-Man Games back in the day and now has sold Plan B Games. When she sold Z-Man Games, she kept Pretzel Games and managed to somehow keep Emerson, Matsuchi, and Century in the wings. With uh, Century Games coming out and then followed up by Azul, Plan B games hit the map. They eventually bought Eggert Spiel and have a big slate of games, about 10 games, but very, very popular games. And Asmodee doesn't necessarily buy companies as much as they buy games. And if you have a game like Azul, which probably has sold in the millions at this point, then Asmodee might buy you. Any thoughts on this? Um, now, here's one thing I do want to say, folks. Every time this happens, everyone screams about Asmodee buying up everything. And Asmodee definitely buys a lot of games. So I was curious. I went to look at the top 10 games that came that have the most number of voters. Not the highest ranked ones, but the most people who rated them on Board Game Geek from 2020. And we have Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, On Mars, Lost Ruins of Arnak, Dune Imperium, Calico, Viscounts of the West Kingdom, Oceans, Fort, Eclipse, Second Dawn for the Galaxy, and Tekkenu, Obelisk of the Sun. None of those are Asmodee. None of them. Now, don't get me wrong. Asmodee, like if I was a local game store, I could not say I'm not going to carry Asmodee games to my store. That would be insane. Right. The, the, the uh, evergreen games that they have, Ticket to Ride, Carcassonne, etc. All those games sell like crazy. But Whenever this happens, people are like, oh, Asmodee owns everything. Not even close. They're definitely the biggest of the hobby game things. And times times 100. Right. I mean, they're huge. But if you don't like their games and you said, I, I won't play nothing, I won't play Asmodee games, you'll be fine. Between Kickstarter and the hundreds of other companies, there's right. plenty of games. But they you shouldn't do buy that. buy everything. Right. They have not bought everything. And I always like to say um, there's one of them and hundreds of of us uh, when I was publishing. So you still have plenty of choices. You certainly, as a as people who, this audience is probably constantly on Kickstarter looking for new games and they're not there. You've got plenty of choices of brand new stuff coming out. So don't look at, don't look at them as the bad guys. They're raising the bar for everybody. They're actually, they're actually good guys in so many ways. So Okay, hate. I'm not gonna be they're as good. positive as that. I don't think Asmodee's good guys. I mean, there's a lot of good guys. I mentioned Steve Kimball earlier. Sure. There's a lot of good people who work for them, and I don't think they're necessarily evil. They're just a big corporation, no. and they do things that big corporations do. This is I true. just don't think that it's destroying the hobby or anything. It's, it's not. However, hold on to your hats, because we're not done with Asmodee yet. <laughs> they're also the exclusive distributor now for Thundergriff Games, Fantasia, and Tabletop Tycoon. Tabletop Tycoon, the game that you would know best from them, would be Everdell. Everdell, which is currently making two point some million dollars on Kickstarter. Um, Thundergriff has a lot of different. They're also a big Kickstarter company. They're not buying these companies, by the way. They're just distributing their stuff in America. Asmodee is already doing this with Simon products. Which, by what? the way, 
I was just notified that it's supposed to be Simon, not come on. So wait, 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 wait. Nah, this is the most important news <laughs> no, of the day right here. They've gone back. Did we yes, change horses they, here? They I, went I was back. Told, I was told this change happened a year ago. I guess. Wait, what <laughs> do you mean so a long. year ago? A year ago is when they told us to, we should say, "Come on." You keep forgetting that 2020 existed, Z. Yeah. I <laughs> no. Was, okay. You're right. It was a year no, before that. No, Tom. All right. 2017. 2018, 2019, 2021, 2022 is coming up. I don't understand. I, I, I understand. Um, <laughs> uh, so Simon is where we're at. That is correct. And I never yeah. changed over. For the record, I never changed. But so to talk oh. about this like news here, like to actually talk about this news. So asthma day is what what's going on here is very specific. They are they are becoming a major North American distributor. They already were, but they're continuing to add lines that they will distribute, and in, in many cases like here, distribute exclusively. And and by the way, another announcement that came out like right after this, but oh, it, it's actually, yeah, and it's actually in the, in the show notes here, Plan B Games, duh, they just bought them. They will also distribute them exclusively, and their, that distribution agreement was originally with GTS. That's, That's where a you big have plan B. Blow to GTS, by the way, because that GTS is um. I haven't reached out to my buddies there, but it's not good for them because they they were they were pl- spending a lot of money on marketing Plan B games. Uh, they definitely you know, were. That was a big thing they had. They yeah. said we got Plan B exclusive. Yep. <sighs> you know. So. Yeah. I, I I I again, and this is where you know, again, I'm not going to be negative. I'm not negative, but this is where is a gray area. Of 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 how much impact they're having on other people in uh, in in the board gaming industry. So on the distribution level, this is hurting someone, and, and maybe and maybe more than it's actually hurting several people, depending on how important you think these other companies are to GTS and, and Alliance and, and ACD. But them doing this is part of you know they're giving these guys a better deal than going with. Four distributors or five distributors, etc. Well, in smaller news, I didn't put make a slide for this, but also store owners have reported in many situations that their prices are going up from Asmo Day. So do not expect to see big discounts on Asmo Day games anytime soon. That's actually is big news, and we're going to cover that on Board Games Insider that they have cut their discounts to retailers, um, which is there was a big uproar when that did come out, but that's interesting. We're not done with Asmo Day yet. They also have a, a deal with Jasco Games where they're going to be distributing the English version of My Hero Academia collectible card game. Now, since this is a collectible card game, I fully expect it to be out of business in a year and a half. But for now, <laughs> no, that's <laughs> come on now. That's just the, that's just fact at this point with CCGs. Actually, this one surprised me that it's called a CCG because I thought they had switched over to trading card games. But anyhow. I don't know this game. Well, it's based on a very popular anime, and it's feeling. Um, it's gonna be the it's gonna be releasing summer this year. Blah blah blah. But again, coming being distributed by Asmo Day. All right, I'm let's jump. Is there are still companies putting out new collectible card games? Yeah. That's the that's the oddest news of, of this, I think. All righty. Well, let's let's um, jump now to Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck also made some announcements. They are going to be, they have a partnership with Game Trays. So Game Trays makes a lot of custom inserts for games, but they also have their own, their little holders and containers and things that they can have. So they're partnering with Lucky Duck to bring them. Lucky Duck is constantly working and growing and building. I've really noticed a, a push by them to do that over the last few years. So I'm so confused here. Is this news about Game Trays going into... Lucky Duck games from now on inside of their games, or is this I don't know unrelated that. to that? I don't know if it has to do with that, but it definitely they're going to be carrying the little the little containers. Right. Uh, Board Game Geek was carrying them for a while. I don't know if this means Board Game Geek will stop carrying them, or if they're both going to be carrying them. They didn't say anything about exclusivity, but they're going to be bringing these containers, the the little plastic ones. You can put them in your game box, but also they can hold the pieces. Yeah, Lucky Duck is helping them sell these things. They are carrying them for game trades. That's what it sounds like. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. They also announced a new 
brand offshoot of Lucky Ducks, Lucky Duck Kids. So they announced they're going to have some kids-focused titles coming in the last quarter of this year. The one I'm excited about is they're going to do something like Chronicles of Crime, the scan-and-play system for kids. That's awesome. I'm really excited for that. I also think they did a really good job. Roy, if you can switch back and forth between these pages, between this and the last one, I like how the, the logo changed from the... Adorable. From the duck that, you know, that duck that looks a little nasty, actually, to the little cute duck here with the kids. I think that's a, a really cool branding that's on point, but also looks a little different. That uh, first one looks yeah, like it's... undead duck, and this one looks like... Yeah, that, that's duck. That's that's clearly not a lucky duck in the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, this is very good branding. Their logo is is uh, very sharp. It's not it's not minimalistic, not really, but it's it's so sharp. I think they did a great job here. This is exciting news. Lucky Duck also announced a whole slate of games coming out. And you can look online to see those, but the one I want to concentrate is one that actually should have probably been in my top 10 anticipated games of the year. This one's coming out in May, and that's this Destiny's game. This was a Kickstarter. It's coming out soon, but they're going to be pushing it in retail. That's one thing Lucky Duck does. They don't just do, you know, like, for example, It's a Wonderful World is one of their big games. They made a nice big Kickstarter version, but that and all the expansions in it will be coming to retail. And... Destiny's here, which looks like a cross between Seventh Continent and Chronicles of Crime. Oh, it looks so good. Mm -hmm. I'm really pumped I, about this. I don't see what the game, I don't see mechanics, of course, but it looks beautiful. I love the artwork. I love that miniature they're showing. Yeah, so. well, it's a, it's a kind of a, the full name is Time of Legends Destiny. It's a narrative app-driven RPG-like board game. So oh. when you go through it, you have this app going through, and things will change in the app, which will change what happens later. But you're also discovering a map like we did when we played Seventh Continent. Take my money, please. This that sounds beautiful. This is a little bit of an offshoot from Chronicles of Crime. I mean, they're taking some of what they learned doing that and putting it into a bigger, bolder, geekier game, for, for lack of a better term. That cover, that miniature kind of screams mythic games and and you know it has that vibe right well actually funny companies. that you say that z because <laughs> this is set in the world of joan of arc oh. like so you mean our world earth joan of arc no the from mythical earth, the mythical joan of arc <laughs> oh didn't yeah. know there was a mythical version versus yeah, yeah. It's made historical by, um, mythic oh. Okay. Games. <laughs> okay. Oh, by Mythic Games. It okay, looks very it. cool. It looks really cool. It's I a like dark medieval fantasy universe. Man, I forgot I, when we did our top. I don't know how I missed this one. We did our top ten anticipated, but I was pretty excited about that. Messed up. You. They messed also have a, a couple other games. Let's show them off here. They got King of Twelve coming out. That looks pretty cool. Small small card game, I think, right? I think so. Okay. And then another small game. I really like the look of this one. Tranquility. This one coming out in the summer. It looks that very, looks tran looks very nice. tranquil. And then small islands. So again, Lucky Duck, they their their catalog went from coming out with a game a year, maybe two. They have a they're a full slate company now. So yeah. this is this is very exciting, I think. And and I really like the team at Lucky Duck. I think they have a good head on their shoulders, and they're pushing again for these games. They're not just doing Kickstarters. They do some really big Kickstarters. In fact, they just jumped to GameFound with their last game. Yeah, they're really good people. And but they're also pushing for retail too. They're they're both arms. So that folks is the news. Whew. 